Hey everybody, Suze here. This week we are bringing you four easy keto recipes that we think you should try. If you are new here, we've been following a ketogenic diet for about two and a half years and uh, we film these every single week to give you a little motivation and inspiration to keep on track with your keto diet. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join our crew. Let's go ahead and get into the video. First up this week, we made this awesome pan-fried chicken with a bacon lemon cream sauce. So to start with, the original recipe I'll link down below called for five chicken thighs. I'm using four skin on, and because I don't really like to eat the thighs, even though they do make the sauce very flavorful, I'm also adding four chicken tenders, and I've just salted and peppered them on both sides really well. And I'm gonna be using this electric skillet that my daddy bought me, love it. If you watched last week's video, you've already seen me use it before, but I will try to link it down below. You could just use a regular skillet on your stove top though for this, and that would be fine. So I am adding probably a few tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil to our skillet, and I do have it set 350 if you're working on your stove top you want to be in about medium high heat and I'm gonna go ahead and put these in skin side down to start with and I'm gonna cook them for seven minutes on each side undisturbed and the chicken tenders could be cooked less than that but I actually like my chicken to be a little bit more well overly well done so I'm popping a lid on that just to protect from the grease splatters and I apologize for the steam that's gonna come up on this one but I went ahead and checked it at five minutes just to make sure that I wasn't burning my chicken and I wasn't so I'll let it continue for a couple more minutes and then flipping it over I'm just gonna like I said cook the other side for seven minutes as well now after that's done I'm gonna remove all of the chicken to a metal bowl that's the one thing I didn't like about this recipe is you got to remove the chicken and put it back into the pan a couple different times but all in all if that's the hardest part of it then it's pretty easy after I get that removed I'm adding a couple teaspoons of minced garlic to my pan I did cut my heat down a little bit uh, if you're on the stove top just cut it down to medium Stirring it constantly to make sure our garlic doesn't burn. I have a cup of chicken broth here and I'm just gonna add a splash to it and stir and scrape the bottom of the pan, just kinda deglazing it before going ahead and adding the rest of that chicken broth to the pan. Now here I have about eight slices of bacon that I cooked, chopped up into little pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and add half of this to our pan to make our sauce and the other half we will stick to the side for later as a garnish. Just stirring that all together pretty well. I'm gonna go ahead and add all of my chicken back to the pan and then I have lemon here that is just thinly sliced. I'm just gonna stick these lemon uh, pieces all around our chicken. Go ahead and pop the lid back on it and cook it on medium for about 20 minutes just so the chicken can get to temperature and our sauce can start to develop. And removing the chicken again to that metal bowl. And it's very important after you remove your chicken to go ahead and remove your lemon. The original recipe says if you don't do that that it will the sauce will be too sour and I definitely believe it because this recipe when we got done with it had just the right amount of tartness to it. It definitely would have been too much if we would have left the lemon in. So I'm just gonna remove those now and just discard those. Now I'm going ahead and adding two thirds a cup of heavy whipping cream to our skillet. Mixing that together really well. You can see it's starting to thicken. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up to a boil. And as soon as it gets to the texture that I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat down to low and add our chicken back to the skillet. Make sure to dump all those yummy juices back in there too. And then I just went ahead and fully coated my chicken in the cream sauce and you're just gonna cook it long enough to let it heat all the way back up about another five minutes and while I was doing that I went ahead and steamed some green beans in the microwave seasoned them with some butter salt and pepper and here it is all plated up to serve it just whatever side you like and your chicken breast go ahead and put some cream sauce over the top of it a little bit of that bacon that we reserved and a little bit of green onion this was so freaking delicious and like I said this sauce had just the right amount of tartness to it I highly recommend trying this recipe out next up we tried a really unique recipe this week that I loved and I'll definitely be making again it's called a silky egg stir fry it's a silky egg shrimp stir fry so to start with we needed to blanch our shrimp so I have some water going on the stovetop and once it was to a boil I'm adding half a pound of these are about I guess medium-sized shrimp uh, they're deveined and chilled and we're just gonna boil these seriously like a minute and a half to two minutes you do not want to overcook them so as soon as they start curling up a little bit and getting a little pink I'm just gonna remove these from the heat drain them and stick them to the side meanwhile in a large bowl I have six eggs adding to that a half a teaspoon of sea salt and the original recipe I'll link down below called for an eighth of a teaspoon white pepper I went ahead and added a fourth of a teaspoon white pepper along with two tablespoons of green onions and then in a dish here I have one teaspoon of arrowroot powder now that does have carbs in it and if you don't feel comfortable using that 
on a keto diet, then you could just use a little bit of xanthan gum, but have a teaspoon of that in there, and then I just added just shy of a tablespoon of water to it, whisking it all together, and then we're gonna add this to our mixture, and that's just gonna help give it the texture that it needs. And then I'm just whisking this all together really well before adding our shrimp to it, and then I'm just kinda stirring those in a little bit. Now over on the stove top, I have a large skillet over medium high heat. I'm adding a tablespoon of ghee. You could use butter, you could use olive oil. I'm just trying to follow the recipe as much as possible because I've never made a dish like this before. Now I'm pouring my egg and shrimp mixture in and I'm just stir frying this. The recipe says to cook it until your eggs are about 70% done to where they're just like a runny scrambled egg. So that's what I tried to do. Just kind of stirring it constantly as I cooked it. And we did cut it down to medium heat before we added the eggs. I'm not sure if I told you that. So once it's about to this consistency, I'm just going to remove this to a separate dish and adding another half of a tablespoon ghee to our pan. As soon as that melts, I'm going to add in about just shy of a fourth of a cup of the green onions. And the original recipe called for two uh, medium firm tomatoes chopped up. I just used one small to medium one to reduce carbs some, especially because we're adding two tablespoons of tomato paste. Then I'm adding about a pinch, about an eighth of a teaspoon, probably sea salt on top of those tomatoes and just stirring these around and cooking them. The recipe says to do this for about 10 seconds. <laughs> I, I cooked these for at least a minute, just until my tomato paste turned into more of a liquidy texture, more like a sauce than the clumpy mass it is when you first put it into your pan. Now adding our egg and shrimp mixture back to the skillet. The original recipe says to just toss this for 10 seconds. I'm sure I did another. 30 to 45 seconds on this because I did want to make sure everything was fully incorporated and done, but I made sure to take it off the heat before the eggs got past that silky kind of egg texture. If any of you have ever made this recipe before, please feel free to give me some constructive criticism and uh, give me all of your best tips for making it. It was so, so delicious. To plate it up, I just took a little bit of steamed cauliflower rice I did in the microwave, a little spoonful of our shrimp and egg stir fry, and I just topped it with a little bit of sesame oil and and a little bit of the green onion we had left over. This was excellent. I would definitely want to make this spicy the next time I make it. It kind of put my own spin on it, but as I said, I've never made anything like this before, nor had anything like this before, so I wanted to keep to the authentic recipe as much as possible. Again, that's linked down below. It's from the Organic Kitchen. Next up, I just threw together some roasted salmon, a sweet and spicy Dijon salmon, and a little mixing bowl. I'm adding just shy of a fourth of a cup Dijon mustard, one tablespoon of swerve brown and then my favorite chili garlic sauce. I'm adding about a teaspoon of that and then just whisking this together really well until that swerves nice and broken up. Now taking a baking sheet, I did line it with non-stick foil, but I am going ahead and spraying it with a little olive oil cooking spray, putting two salmon fillets skin side down onto the baking sheet. These are like six to eight ounces. One's a little bit smaller than the other. And then I have a bag of this organic broccoli that I always buy from Costco. I did not pre-steam it, but I did go ahead and thaw it out so that it would roast up with the salmon. And I'm putting a generous amount of Himalayan pink sea salt over all of it as well as some ground black pepper and just using a little silicone basting brush I'm just going to cover the tops of my salmon with this little sauce we put together making sure to get all of the edges and then because I didn't want to waste it and it seemed like a great idea I went ahead and plopped the remainder on top of our pieces of broccoli and I'm gonna roast this in a 400 degree oven uh, depending on how you like your salmon would be you know how long you cook this probably 15 minutes would be like a good medium range for most people for me I like my salmon a little bit more well done than that and I wanted my broccoli to get nice and you know a little crispy so I cooked mine 400 degrees for 20 minutes and here it is when it comes out of the oven my salmon was perfectly moist still nice and flaky here it is plated up loved this flavor combo I'm not the biggest like mustard fan but Dijon mustard mixed into a, a glaze like this is just so delicious quick easy healthy keto meal last up this week I adapted this recipe for Spanish rice and hamburger is what they called it. So in a large pot over medium heat, I have one pound of ground beef. Went ahead and broke that apart and let it brown a little bit before adding five slices of raw chopped up bacon, along with two tablespoons of chopped up onion, a fourth of a cup of chopped green bell pepper. And then I'm taking my meat chopper upper. I always have linked in the description box. And a couple of you have told me that you've recently found some of these in the dollar store. And I don't know if that's Dollar Tree or Dollar General, but y'all should definitely check that out. Out. Um, I think I paid five bucks for mine on Amazon and I can't say if the other ones are sturdy as this one but for a dollar 
it's definitely worth checking out, right? So just mixing that all together until it's all nice and browned. And because this was a mixture of the ground beef and bacon, it was gonna have a lot of excess grease, I did go ahead and drain the excess before adding three cups of frozen cauliflower rice. I'm just kind of stirring that in a little bit from the bottom before adding one cup of tomato sauce. And again, always double check your sauce, make sure it's just pureed tomatoes. And this recipe I changed up her seasoning blend. So she added a teaspoon salt. I just did a half a teaspoon salt, a half a teaspoon ground black pepper. And I accidentally put in a whole teaspoon of cumin instead of an eighth of a teaspoon as she called for. I don't know what an eighth of a teaspoon cumin would have really done for it. So I'm glad I did that along with a fourth of a teaspoon garlic powder, a teaspoon chili powder, and then I just stirred this all together really well before putting a lid on it and letting it cook for about 20 minutes just so everything could really incorporate really well and my cauliflower rice could get nice and done. Removing the lid and topping it with a half a cup of extra sharp shredded cheddar cheese and putting the lid back on and just letting that melt for like another five minutes on low. Here's what it looks like when it's done. And here it is plated up just with a little sour cream and a pinch of chives on top. This was excellent. Again, I'm glad I messed up and added the extra cumin. And of course, I always decrease my salt, but you adjust it however you see fit. Just know that I did change it. I'm always worried somebody's going to follow a recipe that I changed like that, uh, and that they're going to follow it specifically as, a, as it was originally written, and that maybe it won't be as good. I don't know. Maybe it would be better. You guys let me know. Hope you enjoyed this week's Easy Keto Recipes video video. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Share it with any of your friends that are trying to follow a keto diet or live a low-carb lifestyle. And as always, leave your comments, suggestions, video ideas, things you'd like to see from us down below. And until next time, bye y'all.